Hey, what's up, folks? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing absolutely fantastic. So recently we did a video where we reacted to the number one comfort food from every state. And my goodness, that made me so hungry. You folks have so many good options to choose from. Today, we're narrowing down on the South and we're going to react to the Southern comfort foods you need to try before you die. So now what I'm expecting from this are some, you know, fried chicken dishes, you know, maybe some biscuits, uh, biscuits and gravy, maybe some various fo uh, forms of pies, just, you know, the things that make you feel at home in the South. The South is definitely one of the areas in the US that I'm desperate to visit. Hence why I'm so interested in this specific video. So without any further delay, let's get into it. If you've ever lived in the American South, you'll good. know that the food down there has its own unique identity oh, and yeah. it's absolutely delicious too. If you mm. haven't tried these, well, bless your heart. These are that the Southern comfort cheese? foods you absolutely need to try. One of the so most good. popular dishes to have come out of New Orleans are beignets. beignets. These airy treats are made with usually square pieces of yeast dough that are fried in hot oil until they puff up. They're then generously dusted with powdered sugar and eaten straight away. Prefer Wait, so tell me, are there, is there anything in the center of these beignets or are they just puffed up dough and you, and you put topping over it? Either way, they look pretty good. Accompanied by a mug of cafe au lait. Arguably the best place to enjoy a beignet is in New Orleans, preferably at the Cafe du Monde in the city's French Quarter. But if getting around is proving a little difficult right now, then you're in luck because they're not difficult to make at home either. Just make sure to turn them often in the oil and be careful not to overcook them. Biscuits and gravy is a hearty breakfast dish that Ooh, you'll find in restaurants and homes across a, the South. I the soft flaky a, biscuits are smothered in white gravy, which is made from pork sausage drippings, milk, and flour. The gravy is seasoned with black pepper and typically includes pieces of the breakfast sausage too, making it even more flavorful. The good news is that sausage gravy is easy to make at home, and there are plenty of different recipes available online. Failing that, you could pick up some of the ready mix packets at the grocery store, although you'll really want to try the homemade stuff at least once. As for the biscuits, if making them from scratch just isn't feasible, the Pillsbury ones you pop open and bake will work just fine. Just so I do not mind getting the ready-made stuff if I'm at home and I need something to make. But if I am to visit the South, I want to make sure everything I eat is homemade. So I get the true authentic feel for what's going on there. So I'll definitely get homemade, whether it's at a cafe or at you know someone's place, I'll try and get the homemade version. Just don't let a southerner catch you taking those shortcuts. Okay. Okay, so boiled peanuts sound kind of bland compared to roasted peanuts, but don't judge a book by its cover. These are actually really good. They're boiled made by taking peanuts. raw peanuts and boiling them for hours in salty water over a fire okay. until the shells okay. turn soggy. These peanuts are then sold at roadside stands all over the South, where residents and tourists alike enjoy them, often with bottles of Coke or sweet tea. For what it's worth, it's usually best to munch on boiled peanuts outdoors, so you can easily spit out their soggy shells. So folks, tell me, boiled peanuts or roasted peanuts, which is your favorite? I've never had boiled peanuts in my life, but I'm definitely, definitely interested to try. It's nearly impossible to crack them open with your hands. Of course, some people opt to eat these peanuts whole, shells and all, but that's one heck of an acquired taste. <laughs> <laughs> okay. For centuries, people have been making use of their stale bread by creating their own kinds of bread pudding. Bread Often pudding. made with bread, cream, eggs, sugar, spices, and raisins, modern bread pudding is the heartiest of comfort foods and should do wonders for warming you up on a cold and dreary day. So how do you make bread pudding even better? Just add bourbon. In the South, oh, people nice. often add a few dashes of bourbon to a number of different recipes, of and bread pudding is one of them. The bourbon combines with the cream and sugar to create a thick, warm sauce that is drizzled over the warm bread pudding right before serving. Brunswick stew is a hearty tomato-based stew that's hugely oh, popular in the good. South. It typically features really lima beans, corn, and other vegetables, along with some sort of meat. The base includes barbecue sauce and a little hot sauce for some heat, too. Early versions of the stew use squirrel meat, but if you're not brave enough to keep it authentic, you can always substitute what? the squirrel with rabbit, chicken, or just about anything else. Virginians claim the stew originated in their Brunswick County, while Georgians will tell you it was first made in the city of Brunswick, Georgia. So, so is it Georgia or is it Virginia, folks? Let me know where it actually began. But that looks like a very, you know, homely stew or warm you up. That's that's definitely the, the thought I get when I think of a comfort food. Wherever it came from, however, it's a truly delicious comfort food that'll easily take the chill out of a wintry day. Looks Grab some cornbread nice. or loaf of any crusty bread for I've that matter to sop up all the Southern goodness. 
Fried catfish is a simple dish that's available at most restaurants that serve fish in the South. Fried and the good news is that catfish is pretty good for you, since it's high in omega-3 fatty acids and low in mercury. If you can't find it at a restaurant near you, however, your grocery store may offer farmed catfish, which is also typically clean and nutritious. Catfish is easy enough to prepare. Dip it in milk, dredge it in seasoned cornmeal, and fry it in hot oil. It only takes a few minutes to get it golden brown on the outside and beautifully flaky on the inside. Add a squirt of lemon and a side of rice, then start chowing down. Pure bliss. I've never had catfish, For guys. a truly comforting meal, there's nothing like a bowl of chicken and dumplings. If you aren't in the South, where you can find them at most sit-down restaurants, you can try making these at home by dropping biscuit dough into cooking soup. And though they aren't difficult to make, dumplings are a kind of art form, and they can take some time to perfect. You don't want your dumplings undercooked and wet inside, but you also don't want them so overcooked that they start falling apart in the broth. Course, Stick yeah. them with a toothpick, and if it comes out clean, you're good to go. Chicken fried good. steak, sometimes called country fried steak, is made from a tenderized cube steak which is battered like this. fried chicken, pan-fried and topped with white gravy. While you can find chicken fried steak in an array of southern states, it's most closely associated with Texas. And as with most things, it's always bigger in Texas too. In fact, at Lulu's Cafe in San Antonio, you can find a 21-ounce version of this dish. And it's not a coincidence that Lulu's is also home to the famous three-pound cinnamon roll too. Wow. That's just how they roll down That's there, massive. as it were. Good old Texas, baby. The chicken fried steak is something near the top of my list of, you know, southern foods that I want to try. I've never had a chicken fried steak in my life, but that is definitely something I want to try. It looks so good. Looks like a chicken schnitzel. I don't know, is it prepared in a similar way to a standard chicken schnitzel? I'd be interested to know. For your next Super Bowl party, why not forego the wings and serve up a batch of southern fried chicken gizzards instead? Believe it or not, your guests might thank you for it. Okay, mm, so you probably don't want to think too much about what a gizzard is, but that'll be easy enough to do once you realize how good it tastes. <laughs> you can cook gizzards in a number of ways, but it's best to boil them first and then coat them before deep frying. Throw in a little hot sauce, and soon you won't be able to get enough of these tender I little morsels. I love hot sauce. I love hot sauce. Chicken pot pie is an iconic southern comfort food that, Ooh. when done right, simply can't be beaten. And done right doesn't mean grabbing a pie from your grocer's freezer section. A flaky golden brown homemade crust is essential for this southern specialty. Inside, the chicken needs to be moist and plentiful. The vegetables must be neither too firm nor too mushy, and the gravy creamy but not goopy. Is it good. a challenge to find a good chicken pot pie? Yes, but it really is worth it. And if you don't trust restaurants to get it right, you could always experiment with different recipes at home. It might take some time to perfect, but oh once you land goodness. on just the right method, you'll never want to cook anything else. Oh my and goodness, guys, that just made me so hungry. That chicken pot pie looks absolutely divine. That is also something that pops to mind as a you know southern comfort food. You can imagine, you know, recipes that have passed down the line, down the generations, uh, producing their own version of chicken pot pie. Man, that is something I definitely want to try. My mom has made a very, very good chicken pie. So I will be a very critical judge if I try anyone's chicken pot pie in the South. But I love that. That made me really, really hungry. Also, a reminder, if you are enjoying this type of video, please remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It definitely helps a lot. But let's continue. Ambrosia didn't actually originate in the South, but you'll still find Ambrosia it at plenty salad. of Southern potlucks. This variety of fruit salad typically Ooh. contains mandarin oranges, mini marshmallows, pineapple chunks, and shredded coconut like mixed with some like sort of it. dairy ingredient. Some people use mayonnaise, while others use cream cheese, plain yogurt, or whipped cream. You I might also find some potluckers add in bananas, cherries, and nuts, too. Because why the heck not, right? Think of it like a banana split without the ice cream. And then maybe throw in some ice cream anyway. If you live north of the Mason-Dixon line, you've probably never experienced chitlins before, and you are most definitely missing out. Chitlins are made from the large intestines of a hog, what? and they need to be carefully cleaned and prepared before cooking, for obvious reasons. Typically, the intestines are soaked in baking soda and water, rinsed several times, turned inside out and cleaned by hand before being boiled for several hours. And just in case you're doing this at home, be warned. Chitlins smell truly disgusting while they are boiling, so put some onion and lemon in the water to tone down the odor. I've never heard of After they dish. are boiled, batter and deep fry them. Never then serve them dish. up with a little hot sauce. Though Pennsylvania has its own. What do you guys think of chitlins? Is that one of your favorites? Have you tried it before? I'm interested to know. I've never tried it. Also, I've never heard of it before. It's the first time ever seeing it. Own version of chow chow, it's actually completely different from the southern variety. In the south, chow chow is a cabbage based type of pickled relish that incorporates onions, peppers, tomatoes, and a whole lot of seasoning. This stuff is often used as a topping for hot dogs and hamburgers, but you could also use it to top your cornbread, fish cakes, beans, and even your mashed potatoes. In fact, you can put it on just about anything. It'll taste great no matter what. 
Collard greens are a leafy green vegetable not completely unlike turnip or mustard greens and are most often associated with soul food. They can be bitter and tough if not cooked properly. But if they're done right, then they'll make the perfect side dish to any southern meal. After washing them well, chop the leaves into inch-long pieces, then simmer them in water. People often throw a mm. ham bone into the pot, along with garlic and onion for a little good. extra flavor. Ooh. But one of the yeah. best addition to collard greens has got to be bacon. That you can good. never go wrong with bacon. Red-eye gravy is made with the grease and drippings of pan-fried ham and black coffee. And yeah, okay, that might sound kinda gross, but this stuff really is amazing. The coffee is first used to deglaze the pan, but is then combined with the grease on a one-to-one -one ratio, resulting in a highly unusual yet genuinely delicious gravy. Wow. You can pour the simple gravy over your ham, potatoes, rice, or grits, but many folk choose to simply sop it up with biscuits. Crawfish, crayfish, crawdads, or mud bugs, whatever you call them in your neck of the woods, these freshwater crustaceans are some of the tastiest seafood out there. Of course, you can eat crawfish meat dipped in drawn butter, just like you would with lobster. But if you ever find yourself in the Cajun areas of Louisiana, do yourself a favor and seek out crawfish etouffee. This is when crawfish meat in a spicy roux is poured over Ooh. rice for an amazing dish with a seriously deep flavor. I love any stew As simple curry. as it sounds, you don't want to make fried chicken and waffles at home. Uh. Instead, hop on over to one of the South's many awesome waffle establishments or diners, the places that really get it right. If you haven't experienced chicken and waffles before, it might seem like an unusual combination, but it really does work. Crispy on the outside and juicy on the inside, perfectly seasoned fried chicken makes a heavenly partner for a plate of buttery waffles. I've never had fried chicken and waffles in my life, guys, but I am very willing to try. That just looks so damn good. Let me know, do you make your own uh, fried chicken and waffles or do you go to your local spots in order to get it done just right? I'll be interested to know how easy is this to make at home? This is also an incredibly versatile dish and should work great for breakfast, lunch, dinner, or a late night snack. Fried green tomatoes is a simple southern side dish that packs a big punch. The key oh, yeah. when making fried green tomatoes is to avoid them turning into a soft, soggy mess. Check your unripened tomatoes are suitably firm, then cut them into 3 8 to half inch slices and soak them for an hour in a mixture of buttermilk and hot sauce. Dredge the tomatoes in a combination of cornmeal and cornstarch, then fry them in bacon grease over medium-high heat until they're crispy on the outside but be careful not to overcook them. You can dip them in just about anything, but a remoulade with mayo, hot sauce, horseradish, and Cajun spices would be the ultimate authentic accompaniment. I so this is the food that we saw as the desired uh, Southern comfort food in the previous video, the fried, <coughs> sorry guys, the fried green tomato. Oh my goodness, it looks so damn good. I can imagine having that and dipping it into your favorite sauce. That's something I've never tried before, and I definitely want to try it when I'm visiting the South. No I doubt. miss the smell of coffee <laughs> and bacon mm. frying. Yeah. Oh, what I wouldn't give for a plate of fried green tomatoes. Aww. If you're looking for something a little out of the ordinary to fill you up, consider jambalaya, a favorite in Louisiana. Jambalaya is a mix of sausage, chicken, seafood, and vegetables, cooked in the same pot with rice and stock. Creole jambalaya contains tomatoes, while the Cajun version does not. Both, of course, are extremely tasty. Jambalaya. In Cajun jambalaya, in rural Louisiana, you might also find a variety of game meats used, as well as alligator, crayfish, and even turtle. All Southerners know that Reminds everything's better when you fry up. it, and okra is no exception. To make these golden nuggets of veggie goodness for yourself, slice your okra, dip it in buttermilk, and then coat it in cornmeal and season before deep frying. The best thing here is that okra is seriously good for you, since it's low in calories and contains a great deal of fiber, potassium, calcium, and vitamins. Damn, it looks the so hot nice. brown sandwich originated at the restaurant in the Brown Hotel in Louisville, Kentucky in the 1920s, and it's still served there today. The hot brown is traditionally an open-faced turkey sandwich with tomatoes, covered in Mornay sauce, which is baked, topped with bacon, and then broiled. Some people say it was originally created with peaches Ooh. rather than tomatoes. Others swear it's a great hangover cure. Pretty much everyone agrees, however, that it's a genuine, bona fide, once-in-a-lifetime sandwich. That is amazing. If that you've ever amazing. eaten at Long John Silver's, you've probably had their hush puppies. But the ones you can get at a southern restaurant or fish fry are a heck of a lot better than the Long John variety. Hush puppies are basically balls of fried cornmeal batter that are often served alongside fried fish or shrimp. Though hush puppies aren't exactly complex, they're kind of like potato chips, and that it's virtually impossible to eat just one. Southern pecan pie. It, it reminds me of something we have um, called fat cook. So it's, it's essentially fat cake is a direct translation from our language Afrikaans to English. And essentially it's just, um, you know, a, a fried dough that like sort of puffs puffs up. It looks very similar to that. So if it is the same, 
um, then I can definitely agree that they are really good. We used to have our fat cook and like slice it and, and put like mints and whatever inside. So man, it's definitely one of the favorites back home in South Africa. If you ever ask a South African, do you like a mince fat cook? He would say, absolutely. I made with a splash of high quality bourbon is hard to beat. If you don't have a restaurant in your area that makes a killer pecan pie though, pecan pie. it's not too difficult to make at home. Beautiful. However, you'll want to experiment with the amounts of corn syrup, brown sugar, and bourbon you're using until you find just the right combination. And sure, you might end up having to bake a load of pies to get it right. But who's gonna complain about that? Ooh. Amazing. If you aren't from the South, then there's a chance you aren't too familiar with pimento cheese. Basically, pimento cheese is a mixture of cheese mixed with mayo and pimento peppers. It can be spread on crackers, stuffed into celery, and scooped onto chips. Some people add it to scrambled eggs or grits, while others use it as a relish for brats, burgers, and hot dogs. In Louisiana, they spice it up by adding hot sauce or cayenne pepper into the mix. But the possibilities for pimento cheese are endless, and once you start incorporating it into your recipes, you're never going to want to stop. How different is that texture to traditional mac and cheese. Is it, does this taste a lot different? I can imagine this has its own unique flavor. Hot liquor is the liquid that's left behind after you boil green vegetables. So what do you do with it other than pour it down the sink? Well, some people save pot liquor and use it in place of stock in their next stew or soup, while others pour it over rice or potatoes. But the best thing to do with pot liquor is drink it. It might seem a little odd, but that way you can reap all the nutrients that have boiled out of the greens. Red beans and hot rice liquor. is a staple dish in Louisiana Creole before. cuisine. Traditionally, families took the ham hocks, bones, vegetables, and beans that were left over from Sunday dinner and used them to create a scrumptious dish of spicy beans that were served with rice the next day. Nice. Cayenne pepper, Tabasco sauce, and other seasonings can turn up the heat on this hearty meal, while some people like to add in sausage or other meats. Here's a tip, though. If you boil bones to make a broth for the base, you'll get exactly the flavor you want without having to add anything else. Gumbo is sometimes confused with jambalaya, but it's not the same thing at all. The key difference is that with jambalaya, the rice is cooked with the rest of the ingredients. Mm. With gumbo, however, the rice is cooked separately. Gumbo okay. is a stew created with a Almost strong, robust stock, sausage, shrimp, other shellfish, and the holy trinity of vegetables, bell peppers, celery, and onions. The most important aspect of home cooking a great gumbo is perfecting the roux that's used as its base. Or you could just head down to New Orleans and get someone to make it for you. Your call. Where's my mac and cheese? Everyone and knows cheese, that real macaroni maybe. and cheese doesn't come out of a box, nor does it come with a packet of powdered cheese. Real good old-fashioned southern mac and cheese is a completely oh. separate dish altogether. It's often oh. created with a combination of cheeses. And you can use anything from smoked cheddar and Monterey Jack to Gruyere and Velveeta. Southern recipes usually feature heavy whipping cream, evaporated milk, or both. And the dish is baked in the oven until the sauce is creamy and the top is crispy. No matter how much you love macaroni and cheese, you've never really tried it until you've had it in the South. You might have seen sweet potato casserole at Thanksgiving dinner and passed it by, but it's time to stop sleeping on this delicious dish. That's Though good. some folks love it topped with charred marshmallows, what? others prefer a topping made with brown sugar and pecans. Wow. Give it a go, and you'll soon realize that this often overlooked Thanksgiving side dish deserves a place on hey, your dinner table all I'm through the year. I'm trying it, baby. I'm trying Check it. out one of our newest videos right here, plus even more mashed videos about your favorite food. Oh, wow, folks. Well, that just made me hungry again. I feel like when I visit the South, Half of my time is just going to be trying the food and I won't be complaining because every time I see food from the South, I feel like it just suits my palate. I just love the thought of Southern food. There's some variations that are similar to what we eat in South Africa to what is displayed in these videos. And I can really just see that so many of it would be so good. So I'm very much looking forward to it. It's going to be an, a very unique experience and, uh, you know, when you visit new places, part of the experience is trying the local cuisine. So, yeah, folks, let me know if there was anything that was left out of this video that you consider a great southern comfort food. I'm always willing to learn. I value your comments greatly. I read every single one. But that was very enjoyable. If you also found it enjoyable, please remember to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. It helps a lot. But Folks, until next time. That is all I have for you today. Have the best week possible. I'll see you when I see you. Cheers.